You click to the last page of the homestuck process. You read it, then you read it again. You scroll down to go to the next session and find nothing. What the fuck? Are you serious? What kind of ending was that? Absolutely nothing got resolved. You stand up so fast, your tail falls over. Jesus Christ, ah, you steamed. Maybe a fence hook with further far. You come to a place for for my elements. But as of right now, you need to understand what happened to dead John. What about Rose and Ken? Well, and the Maris. What about blah blah? God, you have to have words with someone stomping out of the little computer room you blink a few times trying to readjust to the dim power after staring at the screen, screen for so long Dark Scrass where's that creepy round motherfucker you saw I got his number now you're gonna find him and force him to tell you the rest of the story you mask confidently down the hall in the direction of the sudden ruckus. Turning the corner, you see two figures. One is definitely Dr. Scrass. The other is a dark, still hot, in a fashionable hat and coat. While you watch the ladder begins to hit the farmer with a cane. Oh, god damn it! You know what's happening. You know some law. You need to get out here before this place goes up in flames. Survive now. Yell yeah, about for unsatisfactory narratives later. With that in mind, you leave behind this ridiculous altercation, trampling a pile of notes and photographs underneath foot as you make a run for the fantasist wall. See ya, suckers. You sail through the you sail through feet first, bracing for the smile of overturned earth and the sight of the twin moons. Man, it's going to be good to see your friends again, especially now at your end with all of this cannon noise. But what's your answer? It's not Foster's corpse field. It's a whole lot of nothing. And you lost. Are you lost between worlds or something? Wait, no, you see a glimmer in the distance, a bright white light, swallowing down the surface of panic, you move towards it. The light comes in the form of a small symbolic house. Hey, you recognize this house? You wonder if you can just sort of, oh, okay, well, you did that. A barrage of images hits you, broken chaos, it flashes it's too fast to make sense of. You just stuck your hand into the most powerful item in the whole world, in this whole narrative, and your body is not taking it well. Bright sizzling pain hits the nerve center of your brain and radiates out to your assumes. Wow, you are more. You ain't a comic character, you ain't meant for a sort of man of tassel energy. It hurts, it burns, it unravels you from the inside out, and then everything goes white. Oh, I'll sit. White screen of valor. What a lovely morning. The air is fresh and crisp. Is there a spring? Probably. You find yourself on the sidewalk in a suburban neighborhood facing a neat, friendly house. A neat, friendly boy stands at the window of the second floor looking down at you. At least you hope he's friendly. Man, you would really love to be his friend. At first, you think the boy's looking at you, but instead, he appears to be looking at the mailbox, which is stuffed so full that the door is half open. Looks like someone crammed a whole box in there. Hopefully you pull it out, al along with a couple of coupons and envelopes stamped with a green symbol. You go to give the boy a thumbs up, but, he's, but he is not longer at the window. Memory prickles at the corner of your 
awareness. You feel like you've maybe done this before. While you're standing for a room, kid, a car pulls up, a driver's wearing a hat and a suit, and he's probably the owner of his house and the father of that family boy. Oh, see, you're just standing out here with all his mail. He's going to think you're trying to rob this place. Play it cool, I thought to myself. Not wanting to behave like a complete buffoon and draw attention to yourself. You just hide all the mail stuff behind your back. There's a bunch of envelopes full, and the boss is bulky. So all this sort of sivers from your grabs like, like a bunch of dead, dead snakes. The disgruntled man in his father suit. Looks at you from across the yard. You can't see his eyes under the brim of his hat, but you are absolutely saw he's giving you a look of intense, fatherly disappointment. About a slime goes for you, man. This guy's good. He's not even your dad, and you're losing it under his disapproval. You are spat him to start shouting or calling for cops. You are so obviously stealing his mail, but instead he just keeps looking at you. Does he know you? Is he someone you should remember, or is it just for ideal of deadliness that causes time and space eternal in all its interactions of reality? That sounds like some bullshit for. Slowly, the distinguished man shakes his head. He goes inside, you can't quite put your finger on why, but you know you have been summarily dismissed. On the advice of your new friend John, you go to visit one of his close comrades.